Hi everyone, this is Neha from Neha Auntie's Reading Room, where we teach children how to be anti-racist one book at a time. For episode three, I'm doing a reading of Race Cars, a children's book about white privilege by Jenny Deveni. Race Cars is a children's book about white privilege. It was created to serve as a springboard for parents and educators to facilitate tough conversations with their kids about race, privilege, and oppression. Race Cars tells the story of two best friends, a white car and a black car. They have different experiences and face different rules while entering the same race. The author has included a number of discussion questions for race cars as well as considerations when talking about race cars with kids. At the end of the read aloud, I will go back to these two pages. So parents and educators, you may pause the screen and have these important discussions with the children who are listening to the read aloud. I will summarize some considerations um, when talking about race cars with kids now. When reading the story, Stop at various points or pause the screen to give children a chance to discuss what's happening and what they think will happen next. Refer back to what you already know about the characters and add new information. Encourage children to make predictions based on this new information. And finally, have children consider what the characters in the book might be feeling as they read the story. Let's begin the reading. This is Chase. Chase is a black race car. This is Ace. Ace is a white race car. They live in a world with lots of other race cars. Big ones, small ones, short ones, tall ones, old ones, new ones, black ones, blue ones, pink ones, white ones, wrong ones, and right ones. Chase and Ace have been best friends forever. For as long as they can remember, they have been training together for the world famous annual race car race. Last year, they were finally old enough to enter the race. For as long as anyone could remember, every year when the big race came around, a white car would win the race. A white car would win fourth place, third place, second place, and the most important of all, first place. Until last year. Last year, Chase won the race. Last year, Chase won first place. Ace won fourth place. Sometimes competition can come between friends, but not for these two. Ace was so happy for Chase, and Chase was so happy for Ace. They loved to race and did not care about place. There were, however, some cars that did care about place. These cars were on the race committee. No one had ever seen them, but everyone knew who they were. They held all the power in the world and made all the rules for the annual race car race. Rumor has it the members of the race committee were all white cars. When the committee heard about Chase winning, they were not happy. As long as the white cars kept winning the race, the members could keep their space on the committee. If other cars started to win, who knows what would happen? They were worried. How could this have happened? They roared. White cars have the fastest tires and the most powerful engines. How could a black car have won this place? This is a disgrace. The committee decided to change a few rules to make it easier for the white cars to win and harder for all the other cars to win. Next year rolled around and Chase and Ace were ready to race again. They had spent all summer training and knew the route by heart. Once around the track, straight through the cornfield, over Blue Mountain, through the Magical Forest, across the bridge and over the finish line. Race day had come. 
Chase started off faster than ever. He zipped around the track as the crowds cheered him on. Then he shot through the cornfields in record time. He made it up Blue Mountain in the blink of an eye. He wove through the trees in the magical forest. Chase was getting ready to cross the bridge when he noticed a sign that had not been there before. Bridge is for white cars only. All other cars must go around the river. Chase paused for a second. Hmm, that's strange, he thought, but he did not want to waste any more time. Chase sped around the river as fast as he could and jumped over the finish line. Even without taking the bridge, Chase managed to come in second place. Ace came in third place. Ace was so happy for Chase and Chase was so happy for Ace. They loved to race and did not care about place. But back at home, something was bothering Chase. It just did not seem fair that the bridge was for whites only. It took twice as long to go around the river. He reminded himself that he just loved racing and that it didn't really matter whether he won or not but he could not help feeling like he was not as good as the other cars. Was something wrong with him? He shrugged it off and decided to train even harder for next year. Back at Ace's house, Ace was snuggled up in bed smiling. He loved to race and did not care about place, but boy, oh boy, did it feel good to win a bronze medal this year. He drifted off to sleep dreaming of next year's race car race. When the committee heard about Chase winning second place, they were not happy. How could a black car have won second place? This is a disgrace. The committee decided to change a few more rules to make it easier for the white cars to win and harder for all other cars to win. The next year rolled around and Chase and Ace were ready to race. Chase started off faster than ever. He zipped around the track as the crowds cheered him on. Then he shot through the cornfields in record time. He made it up Blue Mountain in the blink of an eye. Chase was heading for the magical forest when he noticed something he had never seen before, a forked road with a new sign. Whites stay to the left and all other cars stay to the right. Chase paused for a second. Hmm, that's strange, he thought, but he did not want to waste any more time. He sped off into the magical forest faster and faster until he realized that he was lost. That house wasn't there before, and neither was that owl. Excuse me, Mr. Owl, I seem to be lost. Could you tell me how to get out of this forest? Why, of course, follow me. The wise, friendly owl led Chase right through the woods and sent him on his way. Chase sped around the river as fast as he could and jumped over the finish line. Even though he got lost in the magical forest and could not take the bridge, Chase managed to come in third place. Ace came in second place. Ace was so happy for Chase and Chase was so happy for Ace. They loved to race and did not care about place. But back at home, something was bothering Chase. He reminded himself that he just loved racing and that it didn't really matter whether he won or not. But he could not help feeling like he was not as good as the other cars. Was something wrong with him? Why did he get lost and not ace? He shrugged it off and decided to train even harder for next year. Back at Ace's house, Ace was snuggled up in bed smiling. He loved to race and did not care about place, but boy, oh boy, did it feel good to win a silver medal this year. Ace did not expect to be faster than Chase. In all their practices, Chase was always faster than Ace. I must be getting much faster, thought Ace, and something must be wrong with Chase. He shrugged his shoulders and drifted off to sleep dreaming of next year's race car race. When the committee heard about Chase winning third place, they were not happy. How could a black car have won third place? This is a disgrace. The committee decided to change even more rules to make it easier for the white cars to win the race, just in case. 
The next year rolled around and Chase and Ace were ready to race. Chase started off faster than ever. He zipped around the track as the crowds cheered him on. Then he shot through the cornfields in record time. He made it up Blue Mountain in the blink of an eye. But at the top of the mountain, a race officer stopped him. Pull over, please. I need to see some identification. Chase paused for a second. Hmm, that's strange, he thought. None of the white cars seemed to be getting stopped. But he did not want to waste any more time. He showed the officer his identification and continued on his way. He sped off towards the magical forest. When Chase got to the forked road in the forest, Mr. Owl was there waiting for him to show him the way out. The wise, friendly owl led Chase right through the woods and sent him on his way. Chase sped around the river as fast as he could and jumped over the finish line. But because the race officer stopped him, Chase did not get fourth place or third place or second place. And Ace came in first place. Chase was happy for Ace, but they were both upset about Chase's race. They loved to race and did not care about place, but the committee had just announced a new rule. Cars that did not place this year could no longer race next year. Next year, Chase would not be allowed to race. Back at home, Chase was devastated. He did not care about place, but he loved to race. What would he do now? Chase could not help feeling like he was not as good as the other cars. Something was definitely wrong with him. Why else would he not be allowed to race? That night, Chase cried himself into a long, deep sleep. Back at Ace's house, Ace was snuggled up in bed. He loved to race and did not care about place. Boy, oh boy, did it feel good to win a gold medal this year. But something did not feel quite right. He did not understand why Chase did not place. He is the fastest car I know, thought Ace. Next year would not be the same without his best friend. Chase was the reason that Ace liked to race in the first place. Ace sighed, struggled his shoulders, and drifted off into a long, deep sleep. Next year rolled around, and Chase was at the race to cheer his best friend on. Ace started off faster than ever. He zipped around the track as the crowds cheered him on. Then he shot through the cornfields in record time. He made it up Blue Mountain in the blink of an eye. Ace was heading for the magical forest when something made him pause. He had seen this sign before, but never thought about it too much. This year, Ace wanted to know what was down the right path. Ace sped off into the magical forest, faster and faster until he realized that he was lost. Back at the track, the race officials were starting to get worried. All of the cars had finished the race except for Ace. Where could he be? The race officers looked everywhere but could not find Ace. The officers called the committee and the committee decided to hold a meeting to figure out the best way to find Ace. We need the very fastest race car, said one. The very fastest race car should surely be able to find Ace, said another. They were all in agreement. But the fastest race car is really Chase, even though we did not let him race, added one member. If we choose Chase, the world will know that we rigged the race. The committee was reluctant, but agreed. They must save Ace. Take down those signs. This is a special case. We must let Chase race at his fastest pace. Chase was nervous at first. He was not sure that he was at as fast as he once was, but he quickly agreed to save his best friend. Here I come, Ace, said Chase. He zipped around the track as the crowds cheered him on. Then he shot through the cornfields in record time. He made it up Blue Mountain in the blink of an eye. When he got to the magical forest, Mr. Owl was there waiting to lead him to Ace. I'm sorry it took so long for me to realize how much harder it was for you to win this race, Chase, said Ace. The best friends embraced. Then together, Ace and Chase finished the race. 
Across the bridge and over the finish line, the friends had finished in record time. The committee decided to give Chase the gold medal this year. Ace was so happy for Chase and Chase was so happy for Ace. Chase did not care about place, but boy, oh boy, did it feel good to finally win that race. The end. Thank you so much for tuning in. I'm now going to go back to the pages with discussion questions. Parents, I hope my reading room is a good resource for you to help your children learn to celebrate diversity and be anti-racist one book at a time. Thank you so much for tuning in and see you next week.